All right, welcome to the uh, podcast for Chapter 14. Uh, in this podcast, we're going to talk about financial leverage. Okay, so we've alluded to this in the prior podcast, but financial leverage can cause stock prices to increase. And so the way it does this is it can improve return on equity and earnings per share. Uh, those are two um, ratios that investors are interested in. And so when those are showing improvement, that tends to lead to more people wanting to buy the stock than sell it, and that causes the stock price to go up. Um, leverage works both ways, though. It could make performance worse, and regardless of going up and down, leverage always increases risk. So let's look at this example. Um, we have a, a company here and its performance at zero debt, 50 percent debt, and 80 percent debt. And uh, one of the things I want to show you is EAT. So um, our earnings are actually decreasing as we take on more debt. And of course the reason for that is because interest expense is reducing profits. Uh, but what is also changing is the quantity of equity. And so it is true that our earnings have decreased as we move through these capital structures, but our earnings per share, right, has tripled, and our ROE, return on equity, has tripled. So our earnings have decreased, but, not, but only at a rate of a, a of one third basically of what our equity has decreased. And so that's the type of thing that should cause our stock price to increase. Okay, so based on ROE and earnings per share performance in good times, investors bid the stock price up. Uh, Ryan, the Companies looking more profitable, so more people are buying the stock. Uh, the question is, under what condition will increasing leverage improve ROE and earnings per share? That's one of the things we want to figure out. And the way that we calculate that, there is a way to calculate it, and we call it return on capital employed. It's abbreviated ROCE, and it's pronounced ROCKY. Um, the, it, this measures the profitability of operations um, before financing charges but after taxes based on, com, uh, on a basis comparable to return on equity. Uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about is that these two are the same. When ROE and ROCE are the same, the firm has no debt. And if the firm is profitable, then this means it's probably under leveraged. And I'm going to show you that calculation right here. Um, earnings before interest and taxes multiplied by 1 minus the tax rate becomes basically earnings after tax when the firm has no debt. Right? So there is no interest because there is no debt. So earnings after tax divided by equity is the formula for ROE. So that's the sort of the mathematical proof of what I've said here. That ROE and ROCE are the same when the firm has no debt. But again, that means it's probably under leveraged. Okay, so here's our here's our guide. If Rocky is greater than the after tax cost of debt, then more leverage improves return on equity and earnings per share. If Rocky is less than the after tax cost of debt, more leverage makes those ratios worse. Okay, you want to see this? Let me drag this down a little bit and get that all on there. I'm sorry, I just won't. The whole thing won't fit for some reason. Okay, so here's our ca our our leveraged scenarios, right? And um, if we are again less profitable, so this is showing that we're significantly less profitable than we were, then um, 
being heavily levered significantly reduces our earnings per share and ROI, and that's going to likely cause our stock price to uh, fall. Okay, here's an example. Let's move that up just a hair. Let's look at this example. So the Albany Corporation, they have 10 million in debt. You can see that here, right? 10 million, so 90 million in equity. Um, and the question is, will borrowing money and retiring stock raise our earnings per share? So if we go and we issue bonds or otherwise borrow money and use it to pay off debt, excuse me, pay off equity, will that um, increase our earnings per share and I guess return on equity? So I wanted to do these first calculations. So our return on equity right now is our earnings after tax divided by equity, so it's 15%. And earnings per share is the um, earnings after tax divided by equity. Remember, or excuse me, the number of shares. So if it's ninety thousand, uh, or these are probably ninety million, but anyways, ninety thousand, and it's ten dollars per share, so it's nine thousand shares, and that gives us earnings per share of a dollar fifty. So we want to. First of all, let's determine what our Rocky is. So uh, EBIT, uh, 22, oh, let's see, what am I doing? OK, I'm sorry, here we go, EBIT. It's kind of late when I'm recording this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, EBIT, um, 23,700. So 23,700 times 1 minus the tax rate divided by debt plus equities, the 100 million. So that gives us 14.2%. Our interest, it says, is 12%, right? Remember, the tax rate's 40. So 12%, so we want to figure out the after tax um, cost of debt. So 12% times 1 minus the tax rate is 7.2. So uh, in this case, Rocky is greater than the after-tax cost of debt. So trading debt for equity, debt for equity will improve earnings per share. Here is a variation of that, uh, a proof of that. So uh, in this case, we have changed it from... Um, it was 10 million and 90 million, so we've added 20 million of debt in this scenario. So our earnings after tax is decreased because we now have more interest expense. And we divide that by equity, you can see our ROE has increased from 15% to 17.2. And our earnings per share has increased from $1.50 to $1.72. So again, what should happen then is our stock price should go up. Um, as I've already alluded to, and you've probably figured out, the financial leverage is a uh, double-edged sword. When we have good results, or, or I guess I'll just read that, when it, we can, it can make good results and turn it into great results, but it can also take bad results and turn it into terrible results. The table I had earlier showed... Um, you know, look at the swing that we could possibly have here, right? We had, uh, when we had no debt, our, you know, our uh, range was um, 4.8, this is ROE, 4.8 to 12. Uh, but when we have a lot of debt, it was 0 to 36%. So that is a big change that can happen from being levered versus not levered. Okay, um, putting the ideas together, how does it affect the stock price? <laughs> so during periods of good time, uh, leverage enhances ROE and earnings per share, um, and that causes uh, stock prices to go up. Uh, leverage adds var variability, which is uh, risk. Uh, when our operating results change, this we call this type of risk financial risk. And these effects could push stock prices in opposite directions. So during good times, 
uh, stock price is going up. During bad times, that risk can be uh, pushing stock prices down. Okay, so when we are we have low leverage, uh, leverage and increase has a positive effect on investors. When we have high debt levels, uh, adding more debt puts a lot of pressure on the organization, and in fact, uh, could move the uh, opinion from uh, our investors from being positive to negative. And so I wanted to kind of show you this graph here. Um, you know, as we, if if you look at from zero to a hundred percent debt, you know, there is, and our stock price reacts on sort of a curve. So at some point, there is the optimal capital structure, the right amount of debt to equity to maximize our stock price. Less than that, we haven't maximized the stock price. More than that, we've taken on too much debt. So we're under levered, over levered. So uh, finding the optimum, here's sort of some rule of, rules of thumb you want to consider. So a firm with a good profit prospects with, and little or no debt is probably missing an opportunity but not using borrowed monies to in, if interest rates are reasonable. So if your company's making money and you have little to no debt, you're probably not as profitable as you could be. Um, so this firm, would we would consider that being under levered or under leveraged. Uh, for most businesses, the optimal, optimal capital structure is somewhere between 30 and 50 percent. Uh, that's what the book says, and so if you get a test question on that, you'll want to answer it that way. Although uh, most firms are probably between 50 and 60 percent. Uh, debt levels above 60 percent create excessive risk and should be avoided. So once we get above 60, 65 maybe, uh, at that point then it starts becoming a concern. Uh, the target capital structure, um, this is based on management's estimate of what they think will maximize the stock price. Let me see if I can push that back up here. Okay, and when our stocks aren't trading at book value, which by the way is almost always, uh, the changes in leverage are not um, changes in leverage are not involving the changes in leverage not involving the purchase of equity at book value are more complex. Um, you can see the formula here. So earnings per share is ROE multiplied by the book value per share. I don't we're not we don't really do anything with that. So mm, let me if I had a little thing here I'd write not that important. Uh, then I would write here pretty important. Okay, so the last thing in this um, in this uh, podcast is the degree of financial leverage or DFL. You want to be familiar with that expression. So financial leverage magnifies the change in EBIT uh, and it uh, into larger changes in ROE and earnings per share. So a change we can magnify that. And, and, and one of the things that allow us to do is, is do that calculation. If our degree of financial leverage is 10, then we know uh, uh, what a change in EBIT, what, what effect that will have. And the calculation for that is EBIT divided by uh, EBIT minus interest equals the degree of financial leverage. Okay, that was kind of a long podcast. Uh, I just sort of wanted to do all of the financial leverage stuff together. Okay.